Hello YouTube, this is Rick Rawlings and welcome to another edition of Let's Play Wings Over Flanders Fields. Uh, we are soldiering on with our Royal Naval Air Service uh, pilot, Mr. Phil Flighty, who has flown four missions, I think, and we're going on to number five. Four missions, yep. Uh, we are in August of 1917 going to advance a few days because we didn't do that last last time so let me uh, set that up all right here we are at August 5th 1917 um, also we're taking I took the second flight of the day so we're not always doing these morning flights so it's gonna be a uh, just after lunch probably a tin of sardines and a little bit of biscuit we'll be on our way Let's take a quick, oh, while we were doing that, I uh, got notification of the first airplane landing on a ship. So we got the birth of the, or taken off from a ship, birth of the aircraft carrier, and also uh, the arrival of the Albatross D-5. So now we got that to contend with. So here's our flight sub lieutenant, Philip Flighty. Uh, since June he enlisted, it's currently the 5th of August. Three confirmed kills, one medal, which I, I don't even remember what the medal, what was the medal? Oh, uh, was that the military, was that military cross? So we got the military cross. Uh, let's see what we got, looks like one, two, three, four, five, six pilots maybe going up and uh, got a, almost a full complement of pilots. Somebody in the, one of the forums was talking about they got stuck with a, a plane in that they weren't planning to have in the squadron. If you come to the inventory workshops, you can actually I'm not sure if there's something that prevents you from doing that, but I think in almost all cases you can actually cycle through, just click on this, and it will cycle through the different versions of your plane. Maybe at some point we'll uh, we'll give ourselves the two-gun one just to see what that's all about. It's going to say we're okay. Yep. So let's head over to the briefing room and find out what the commanding officer has in store for us today. All right, so the CO says patrol behind friendly front lines. Okay, so I'll take a look at where, where we're going to be. Oh, we're just flying, just uh, zipping right around the aerodrome here. So two miles, okay. Uh, four miles round trip, so we're not going to need a ton of fuel. We'll get everybody down now. We may just kind of wander off to the front after it's over, so I don't want to go too low if nothing exciting happens. So we'll keep it there and see if everybody shows up on the flight line and then head off to the field. All right, here we are on the field with the weather looking charming as always. I think I mentioned last mission that there is a, a procedure that you can do to start up the engine. I pretty much immediately forgot what that was. I guess I really didn't even look it up, so we're just going to go with the old E button, and I don't think our wing would wait for us anyway. Just a quick check of all our control surfaces, which appear to be moving freely, and looks like it's our turn to roll, so full throttle, a little bit of rudder just to keep her straight, a little bit of forward pressure, and then just a little bit back, and then she lifts right off. I think I mentioned this before, but if you've ever seen old World War I planes take off, modern, even modern reproductions or the vintage ones, they don't need a lot of, uh, a lot of runway. They, they just are rolling and boom, they're up. Take a quick look and make sure we are not immediately being attacked. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my mixture. too much it's, it's real I'll tell you what it's good 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 off so careful about that you'll notice we have uh, ailerons on all three wing surfaces which I think is what helps give such snappy maneuverability and the other thing about the, the triplane was that one of the reasons for the three wings was to improve visibility 
So if you've ever flown the pup or the camel, uh, it's it's really hard to look up because then you have this giant wing in front of you. In fact, you may be aware that the camel has cutouts in the wing. But by having the three wings, the wings are all much narrower, cord front to back, and that gives you tremendous visibility without sacrificing lift and maneuverability. So the triplane was not originally all about trying to get this really lifty plane. It was trying to get basically a, a soft lift pup that you could see what was going on around you better. And it did a remarkably good job. So since we're just a few miles away from our control area, um, just gonna, gonna gather up with everybody and bring you back should anything happen. It could be quiet, quiet patrol if he comes back this way, but we'll see. All right, so here we are at altitude on patrol. Um, one of the things the, the game does particularly well, I think, is set up these, these missions. So you would have squadrons sort of patrolling in the backfield, making sure, you know, since like our aerodromes down one of those ones, and making sure that nobody comes and bombs your airfield. And you'll notice that because of the weather, we're, we're right below the cloud layer. So that would be what you would do in a flight like this if you're preventing recon planes from coming over and taking pictures of stuff or dropping bombs on stuff you need to be below the cloud where they, where they were. Otherwise, if you're above the cloud layer, they could just fly under you and you'd never even see them. So it's a pretty nice setup for the mission. I don't know if we're going to get any anybody coming over today. I think that one of the... I uh, heard that... It was the flight lead's job to look for enemy aircraft and navigate, and it was everybody else's job not to fly into the flight lead, so... That's what you gotta do sometimes, it's just practice formation flying, which I suck at. So I'm always looking around. So it is interesting, if you watch the, if you can see the planes blip, you'll see the little oil come out of them. I don't think they're actually regulating their speed that way. I think that's, I don't know. It's hard to say. If I go full out and I'm trying not to overtake them, I would be flipping constantly. So I think it's a combination of throttle and flip, at least for effect. But it's, ni it's nice, it's nice to see that little extra puff of burned oil and fuel come out of there. They flip the engine. You can even hear it, I don't know if you just heard it. But Alright, these guys are going into land, so we did not have ultimately have any incursions into our airspace, at least that we were able to discern. But before we go in, let's do, uh, let's take a little look at the triplane's handling and how it might be different from some of the other planes like the Albatross or the Spad. So, we've got a rotary engine, which is, means the engine is kind of like just right on the front of the plane in a little chunk, and it spins. Theoretically, that makes right hand turns, sharper than left hand turns, and the nose pulls down, and in left hand turns, the nose naturally pulls up. 
that that happens. So that's a real thing, right? So if I just turn this way, my nose does tend to climb somewhat. I don't think it's as, and if I go this way, my nose tends to descend somewhat. I don't think it's as pronounced as it probably would have been in real life, but there is that effect there. Um, I don't do a lot of fancy maneuvering in combat. I think even the Red Baron, who was not considered to be a fantastic pilot, per se, to shoot a lot of you know, like, uh, technical maneuvers in combat. But we can, you know, we certainly, some of them I'll do, probably we'll do a Shandal, which is kind of like a climb and a turn. So you try to gain altitude while you're turning. And I, you see me do that, especially in the spat, to try to get away from albatrosses, kind of get on top of the fight. Doesn't always work. Depends on what your, you know, the relative starting energies of the plane are. If you're already going kind of slow and they're going pretty fast, they're still going to be able to overtake you. Some albatross will have a better climb rate than the SPAD, despite the SPAD's bigger engine. So that's kind of a, a shendal. Um, another thing you could do, I suppose, is uh, do a barrel roll if you want to throw off your attacker. So you're going to climb a little bit and then you're going to and then bring the other rudder around to come out like that so you do a little corkscrew through the air Let's see if I can do it I wonder if I can do it to the left with the, the torque makes any difference so you're gonna climb a little bit turn and then you actually end up kind of pushing down that like yeah okay that worked um, what else can you do do a loop so, I have very few, like, serious complaints about Wings Over Flanders Fields. Um, one of the complaints that I have is I feel like the player version of the planes are a little bit weak. They tend to get damaged due to high speed very quickly. That was, that was a loop, by the way. Um, whereas the AI, you'll never really see them. I don't think you'll ever see them damaging their wings due to uh, you know, a dive or damaging their plane due to a dive. Especially if you've ever if you ever try to fly like a Newport 11 career <laughs> and they go on a balloon bust and you try to follow them as they dive down on the balloon, you're going to leave your wings far behind you. So I know OBD says they follow the same rules as the players do, but I suspect that there's maybe a little cheating going on there with the plane integrity. Um, so the, with that in mind, what I'm going to show you is one that I do use, which is a split S, which is how you can kind of get away in reverse direction. So you cut the throttle, turn, dive down, and pull, and then throttle back up, and now you're going the other direction lower, so you can escape from planes then, that way. If they're good, they'll follow you, but it does buy you a little time to think of your next maneuver. And then the Immelman, which actually changed what it was called between the first war and the second war. So I think the, if I remember correctly, the first World War Immelman, like the true original Immelman, was a climb and then sort of a, a um, rudder turn because the, the Eindeckers that did it they had no, it's, it's like if you look at this, you see there's no vertical stabilizer, right? The whole tail is rudder. And so that gives you a lot of rudder authority. And so what you would do, and I don't know if I can pull it off or well, is you would dive on a plane. You, As you gain speed, you shoot at the plane. And then as you went over the plane, you pull up. And then as you kind of got up, you hit your rudder and just kind of go kind of float down like this, and then if you're careful about it, it's gravity fed fuel tank, you kind of go back the same way, which I don't know exactly the same way, I was kind of looking at the town, right? But you'd have the plane in your field of view and you do another attack, and you just kind of keep strafing them, and then pull up, and then use your rudder authority to kind of go over on your side. 
back down and straight from going the other way. Now, the other type of Immelman was what's called a wing over, and I think I was, and that's the World War II version of what an Immelman became, I believe. And I was kind of doing it there, and I don't remember exactly. I think it's, you go up like this, and then you kind of, it's kind of like a half loop, but you kind of come down and then you turn back. I think. I don't remember exactly. I'll have to look that one up. But at any rate, all of these things you can do pretty well in the triplane. I can cut my throttle and then blip. Down and around. And there's our there's our overspeed damage already. Right, just barely. But yeah, it's a it's a maneuverable plane. It's not super fast. No no World War One planes were super fast. But um, you are pretty maneuverable. Your one gun does not give you a lot of firepower, and it can be a little tricky on the aiming, especially with the tracers. OBD, make the tracers more pronounced. Give in a little bit. We already have enough problems with the there's no. So you can see in the distance things get very slightly grayed out the edge, but there's no sort of like atmospheric filtering, which helps you kind of disturb, determine which things are closer to you. Everything from a long way out looks crystal clear, and it makes it really hard to track planes which are going to be closer to you than the ground. So they could either develop that filtering, which is where, where the more advanced direct effects, direct X effects would come in, or they could make, you know, tracers a little bit better that would help you in sort of targeting the enemy. I mean, there's, there's a few things they could do. And again, these are all minor quibbles. This is the one game. There's a couple of games that I keep kind of coming back to year after year after year. This is one of them. All right, despite what I said earlier, I do not quite, I don't feel like I have quite the authority to head off to the front by myself uh, since I'm still a junior, junior leaguer with the squadron. So I am going to go and land. Bring it back to that point. The thing I was asked about in the comments of one of the videos is do I have the other um, OBD product which is Wings Over the Reich and I do and it's very similar it's got the same really strong campaign it's got some pretty compelling AI um, the plane set and the campaign are kind of limited right now to Battle of France and Battle of Britain uh, but it's it's all the you know the good things that you like about product in terms of it's really the campaign and the, the feeling of being in the war and the, you know, AI that will challenge you if you're not paying attention. Uh, but I just don't, I'm just not as enamored with World War II planes as I am with World War One. World War One is like you're in these fragile wooden canvas crates that you're always flying on the edge of stalling, just barely keeping it together, trying to get a solution on the, the opposite plane and they're trying to do the same to you, and you can see the you can see the pilot in the other plane. Whereas World War II, the planes are flying so fast that they just aren't as maneuverable, and the closure rates are such that it's just I don't know, it's just really a whole different experience that is fine. I, it's just not as engrossing to me as the World War One stuff is, and so I don't play it that often. But I do have it, um, and I think if you like this experience and you're into World War II, you'll you'll like that experience. I saw this, um, there's this video of Ernst Uday, who was a German, really good German World War I pilot. Am I going? I never go slow enough. You know what, we're gonna go around again. These planes don't slow down fast enough, I don't think. It's one of my other issues. Um, but he does this incredible, I'm gonna, I'll post the video in the, in the comments, I'll post the link. But he does this, um, landing this was post world war one and he had this plane that he was sort of barnstorming in and he would do this thing where he would swoop down and with the skid of the plane he would like pick up this scarf off the ground and then he would fly up into this big you know, do this big sort of uh, wing over or immelman type maneuver that i was showing you earlier and he would 
cut the engine and then do this incredible and it was like sideways dead stick landing it was just amazing what really good pilots could coax these planes to do whereas I can't even seem to lose speed to land here so let me shut up and see if I can get us in without hitting a tree or overshooting the runway too much the engine's going to be running next mission. So let's head to the debrief. I don't know if, uh, I don't even think we had an A flight, so probably nothing else happened there, but let's go check it out. Here we are, 53 minutes of uh, just going around the home field. But like I said, that was a, uh, that was a realistic thing. Sometimes you draw those patrols. Uh, no enemy aircraft shot down. Let's take a look at the details. Nobody fired a shot. Everybody's down. Everybody's good. New day. And there we have it. There's flight number five in the bag for uh, flight sub lieutenant Philip Flighty. So hopefully you uh, enjoyed this short, but um, hopefully still somewhat interesting edition of Let's Play Wings Over Flanders Fields. And I look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, take care out there and we'll, we'll catch you later. This is Rick Rawlings.